been the voice of agriculture, a resource for farmers who work the land. And now for a hundred years, connecting people and helping them to understand. We're serving farm, family, and community. DeKalb County Farm Bureau. We're serving farm, family, and community. DeKalb County Farm Bureau. We've been the voice that tells the story from farm to the city to lend a hand. And now for a hundred years, connecting people and helping them to understand. We're serving farm, family, and community. DeKalb County Farm Bureau. Serving farm, family, and community. DeKalb County Farm Bureau. DeKalb County Farm Bureau is proud to celebrate its 100th year and pay tribute to the men and women who have contributed to the organization's success. It all started with an enterprising group of farmers, bankers, and businessmen who came together to form an agricultural organization, the DeKalb County Soil Improvement Association, dedicated to improving crop production. It was the first soil improvement association to be incorporated in the state of Illinois and the first county to hire a farm advisor to help farmers with their soil and crop productivity. Eventually, the name would change to DeKalb County Farm Bureau, and its mission would expand to provide farm services plus education and information for members. Soil, seed, success are the three words that best describe our centennial journey. It started with the need to improve our soils, then our desire to produce hybrid corn, and finally the success attributed to our leaders who had the foresight to advance our organization. Established in 1912, DeKalb County Farm Bureau was a pioneer in the Farm Bureau movement. Farmers like Henry Park had a vision to bring a soil expert from the university to DeKalb to boost their soils and crops. It wasn't long before the Farm Bureau movement was underway with farm advisor William Eckert, President Dylan Brown, and others. Back in the early 1900s when we had Charlie Gunn and Tom Roberts Sr. and some of those that saw a need uh, to educate um, the farmer at that point on on his fertility and cultivation and, and farming practices, and that's where it all started. Uh, over a hundred years, here we are today, you know, and, and that hasn't lacked off with the hiring of qualified people to organize the farm group and, and organize meetings and so on. And uh, it still is important today to, as it was then. It's our forefathers that brought all this forward and made it possible. Those people back then, they, they, they're special. They, they've done a, a, a lot of things that we tried to do, but they were at the beginning of it. And of course, uh, because of the new seeds and all that sort of thing, why they moved on into hybrid corn, and, and so that's where DeKalb came from. The Farm Bureau was sort of your main place you came to get information. On, uh, even on crops and uh, fertilizers and everything. You came to the Farm Bureau to get that information and uh, it was uh, good advice. It's just changed now to what it was, but in those days we counted on the Farm Bureau for our information. Agriculture was changing at the turn of the century and local farmers embraced the modernization. You know, we would go from horses to tractors to combines and I remember combining with a little old two-row combine and a full type combine, same with a corn picker, two-row corn picker. Then all of a sudden computers came in and that changed the world. And you know, everything's changed now. You know, we don't, uh, we don't have to go to any special place to, to get something. All you have to do is go to the computer, you can find what you want and figure out what you want. But uh, it has made a tremendous difference. It's a long way from horses to computers. The organization grew to offer a wide variety of assistance to farmers, rural families, and the community. From the age of 14 and 4 each to 94 now, most of those 80 years I've had some contact with the Farm Bureau in some way. I've always had respect for the way the Farm Bureau always took care of all ages, starting with 4-H and then going on to rural youth and young farmers and then prime timers, 
and in addition to the ladies groups and uh, the schools they work with and uh, in addition to all of the activities for farmers who are actually in, involved in the farming. From my grandfather's time it was almost a necessity for him to start it to have some kind of coordination amongst farmers uh, and it, it still is that way and that's as it's progressed I think it's been very helpful to every generation with the different things that Farm Bureau has done as far as starting commodity groups and basically getting farmers together socially to interact with each other to get to know people you probably wouldn't get to know otherwise through Farm Bureau events and it's just been a real important part of our life and raising the family. I remember dad mentioned socially it Farm Bureau kind of provided our only social life. Uh, the uh, swim nights that family events handled and rally days, I think were our, probably two of our only outings when we were growing up, but <laughs> we always enjoyed it and thought it was a pretty big deal. I started when I was uh, probably in my 20s with the Young Farmers Organization, and uh, that was quite strong at that time, and I uh, got involved with the discussion meet, um, was quite involved with that for quite a few years served as an officer with Young Farmers and, and just really got to know a lot of people in the county. So that was probably my first start with Farm Bureau here. I remember going into Chicago, in fact, uh, uh, doing the discussion meet there for the state final. That was, that was, that was quite interesting because they had breakout groups and uh, met some really neat people in there. It's a voice. It's a local voice. It's a state voice. It's a national voice. Me personally, I don't have time <laughs> to run to Washington, to run to Springfield, you know. and. You know, that's what I really enjoy about Farm Bureau. So Farm Bureau Women's Committee was very important, uh, district-wise as well as county-wide and then statewide. And as we, um, as we encouraged the people to learn about agriculture, one of the things I always looked forward to was Farm Bureau Annual Meeting after the kids got in school where we went out to the meeting and then got to go to the churches for a wonderful dinner. To me, the prime timers was one thing that I really got a, a lot of enjoyment out of it. And to me, that's a big part of the Farm Bureau. Even doing the, the egg in the classroom, you know, it was, it was hard or challenging because, you know, you got a busy day or whatever, and then you think, oh, I'm going to have to run to the Kingston School. And, so and then, but once you got there and did it, and when you got done, and yeah. Sherry could tell you. And that. the farmer always thought that he didn't have the skills to communicate the the topics, and that's what the kids wanted to see the most was the farmer sitting there. Even though I led most of the discussions, he the farmer needs to be in that room to answer all those very interesting but worthy questions that the kids have. And so he would always tell me, oh, do I really have to go? Can't you go without me? And I said, no, the farmer has to be there for it to be authentic and... We were a good team. We were. I really think it comes down to the forward thinking of the, of the farmers, the leaders of the organization at the time, the volunteers that were on the various committees at the time. Uh, always looking at what are the needs of the organization and how can we best meet those needs? I can't see DeKalb County without a Farm Bureau. Really think it's been a wonderful organization. And it's well respected and we have a very professional staff. DeKalb County Farm Bureau, like any organization, focuses on what it does best, and that's agriculture. We have been active on many fronts with outstanding leadership, involved members, and dedicated staff. These are all attributes that have made us an effective county organization. As we embark upon this milestone, we celebrate our heritage and look forward to a progressive future here at Farm Bureau. A century old, the Farm Bureau organization is revered as the voice of agriculture. The biggest value, if you go back almost to the start of Farm Bureau to today, and that's the voice for farmers. Uh, it's maybe, uh, greater today than it ever was before. Because as we see every year, we lose more farmers. Uh, there's more and more people out there that are trying to take away our ability to farm in a manner that we, we need to farm. And, uh, and having Farm Bureau as a voice 
uh, continues to be far and away the most important part, as I see it, of Farm Bureau. They've taken a position on different things that have happened that, that were coming up in, in the county, and I think this has been great. And about 99% of the time, I, I agree, 100%. Sometimes, you know, there might be a question, but for the most part, I'm totally in favor of what they do, maybe because I was a farmer all those years myself. I think I see Farm Bureau as being the voice for the farmer at the national level for, for less and less farmers as we go on. Farm Bureau is a voice for the farmer, uh, whether it's a voice in the political arena, uh, trying, to, trying to get our views across to legislators, uh, a voice in the educational arena, uh, trying to educate not only consumers but teachers as far as what we do and, uh, and the importance of it. Um, th those are vital roles that, that Farm Bureau plays. And as time goes on, we, we get fewer and fewer farmers. And I think Farm Bureau becomes more and more important. Farms are getting larger and uh, we here is, for that reason alone, we really need Farm Bureau to be aggressive and so on. And also along with that, being that there is less farmers out there, uh, the ones that's out there has to step up to the plate and support Farm Bureau. I would say that Farm Bureau's role is probably going to increase in its, uh, in its uh, need in the coming years. Just with the reduction of the amount of producers out there in the county and in agricultural in general. I mean, we've, we've seen a drastic reduction in the amount of farms and the, the people who work on farms because of our increase in efficiencies. And it's going to be all more the more important for us to band together and work on political and other issues related to agricultural and some of that being public outreach to inform our consumers of the products we produce and what those products mean to the producer and how we produce them. And I think Farm Bureau will play a pivotal role in that. Looking back a hundred years, you can see how society has changed, how farming has changed, and the needs of farmers, and the organization has met those needs and changed with it. The, the uh, type of organization we have today is entirely different than the Soil Improvement Association back in 1912. But it still has that same mission. It's focused on farmers, it's focused on helping them be successful, and it's focused on helping bring better products to them. So uh, I think uh, we really have a lot to celebrate. We've changed a lot, and I think we will continue to change as we uh, meet the challenges of the 21st century. Soil Seed Success, celebrating 100 years, DeKalb County Farm Bureau. DeKalb County Farm Bureau has been many things to many people. We have strived to fulfill the needs and desires of our 6,500 members. We've made great strides in this century serving farm, family, and community. As we look ahead to the next century, I can assure you that the DeKalb County Farm Bureau will continue to be progressive and a leading agricultural organization. We've been the voice of agriculture, a resource for farmers who work the land. And now for a hundred years, connecting people and helping them to understand. We're serving farm, family, and community. Tells the story from farm to the city to lend a hand. And now for a hundred years, connecting people and helping them to understand. We're serving farm, family, and community.